Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, the 2014 Public Benefit Flying Award recipients have been announced. The MAVEN satellite was successfully placed into orbit around Mars, and Boeing to boost 737 output by 10 planes per month. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The National Aeronautic Association, in partnership with the Air Care Alliance, a nationwide league of humanitarian flying organizations, is proud to announce the recipients of the 2014 Public Benefit Flying Awards. The Distinguished Volunteer Pilot Award was given to J.J. Quinn. Quinn is a retired airline pilot who has devoted more than 20 years as a volunteer pilot flying to benefit the public in need. The Champion of Public Benefit Flying Award was given to the EAA and its Young Eagles program. Beginning in 1990, the Young Eagles program has introduced aviation to hundreds of thousands of young people. The Public Benefit Flying Awards were created to honor volunteer pilots, other volunteers, and their organizations engaged in flying to help others as well as those supporting such work. These awards will be presented at the NAA Fall Awards Dinner on November 5th in Arlington, Virginia. NASA's Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution spacecraft, known as the MAVEN, has been placed into orbit around Mars. It has initially been placed into an elliptical polar orbit around the planet that is 35 hours long. Over the next six weeks, MAVEN will undergo a commissioning phase that includes placing the spacecraft into its final science orbit and deploying and testing its instruments. MAVEN is the first dedicated mission to survey the upper atmosphere of Mars. Mission scientists are seeking to understand how the loss of atmospheric gas to space changed the Martian climate. The spacecraft's flight operations are controlled by a team at Lockheed Martin's Mission Support Area near Denver, Colorado. After these messages, Tom Patton brings us up to date on Boeing's longest running production airplane. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news spy at aero news.net. It seems the Boeing 737, which first entered airline service in 1968 and was affectionately referred to as Fat Albert, is going stronger than ever. Tom Patton reports. Boeing commercial airplane CEO Ray Connors said recently that the company plans to boost output of the 737 factory in Renton, Washington to 52 airplanes per month by 2018. That's an increase of 10 planes per month. Boeing reports they have a strong order book which includes nearly 2,300 737 MAX airplanes and that the demand for the 737 series in China is a huge driver that is expected to keep growing. It's reported that Boeing has surpassed 1,000 net orders for this year, and that does not include a commitment for 100 of the company's MAX 200 airplanes, which won't be posted until later this year. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, it's fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. All things being equal, it's about a month's extra business in five or six days. In this case, we gave our ramp over to MBAA on the 15th of October, and we won't get it really back until about the 5th or 6th. When you combine the MBAA convention with an unexpected temporary flight restriction, it can get pretty wild in one of the country's busiest FBOs. ANN's Jim Campbell talks with Bob Showalter about all the activity. Search Bob Showalter's MBAA 2012 on Aero TV's news channel. 
The FAA has certified Aspen's new Evolution VFR PFD. The company says it's the industry's first class panel display designed specifically for pilots flying in the VFR environment. Aspen's market research concluded that VFR pilots and non-current IFR pilots represent over 50% of the flying population. John Uzakai, Aspen's president and CEO, said in part, quote, This is a segment of the flying public that has been underserved with an affordable glass panel solution, end quote. The VFR PFD will meet the needs of the VFR pilot as well as meet their future IFR ratings goals through a simple software upgrade. The upgrade allows the VFR PFD to function as a pro PFD and support high-end IFR performance and additional advanced options. After the break, we'll take a look at Air France's labor problems. Stay tuned. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. A majority of Air France's pilots have voted to extend their labor action for an additional four days through September the 26th. And union leaders say it could go on even longer based on the strength of the vote. The primary issues for the pilot is Air France's plan to expand the Transavia low-cost unit of its business and set up bases in countries other than France as it tries to compete with other low-cost airlines. The union said it was concerned that Air France would abandon Transavia and France entirely, blame that on the pilots, and then continue the expansion outside the country. As we reported last week, a company named The Airplane Factory set out to build the four-place version of their sling aircraft in only four days, using skilled and unskilled help. The Sling 4440 Challenge, in which a Sling 4 was built in four days by 40 workers, was a success. The build took place at the 2014 Africa Aerospace and Defense Expo at the Waterkloof Air Force Base in South Africa. The team consisted of highly skilled workers and even some marketing, admin, and catering staff. The team worked around the clock with the day and night being split into 10 and 14 hour shifts respectively. On day four, sling designer Mike Blythe turned the key and the sling burst to life on the first try with cheers and applause from the crowds. A sling was born in only four days. The Beelite Ultra Cub now has the ability to splash and unsplash with the addition of straight floats or amphibious wheeled floats. James Wiebe, owner of B-Light Aircraft, flew the B-Light Sea Light Amphibious Ultralight off the water for the first time last week. The Sea Light is powered with a F-23 Hearth 50 horsepower power plant, coupled with a carbon fiber three-blade propeller. Wiebe said the plane was solid on the water, both in light chop and in smooth water. The amphibious version of the Sea Light incorporates carbon fiber floats, coupled with trailing link retractable landing gear. The straight float version uses the same carbon fiber floats in a water-only version. Well, that's our program for September 24th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new episode. And be advised, there are some huge upgrades and changes coming soon to Airborne. Starting with a daily schedule, that's Monday through Friday, early next year, and so much more. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.